Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on just this upcoming DC World or the DC reboot, that, uh, reboot might I say, that's coming our way. So we are getting closer and closer to the end of 2024. I have no idea if this year's gone quick or slow. I'm not sure. Maybe it just depends who you are, I guess. But we're getting closer to the end of this year of 2024, at the very least, with CCXP taking place in South America around, you know, towards the end of the year. I think it's is it really early December? I think it is something like that. But of course, CCXP is where, you know, movies do get a, ch a final chance in the year to promote and showcase what they have to come. Usually, like a lot of the movies that go there are releasing in the first half of 20, well, the, the following year. So in this case, it'll be 2025. But sometimes there could be some stuff that goes there that's coming out in the back half. But usually it's like, you know, stuff that's coming out before like, you know, or before like June or July or around that time at the very least. But this is like the final chance to really show anything because of course Comic-Con or San Diego Comic-Con might I say isn't until what end of July or something like that. There is CinemaCon in April I think it is but oh no then again CinemaCon's become like pretty much like a like a like a pretty much a lead up to Com to San Diego Comic-Con like nowadays. No it used to be but post COVID they just pretty much turned into another convention um, or like another Comic-Con of sorts which is a bit weird but anyway. But purely down to good timing when it comes to the DC reboot, it does seem that James Gunn Superman will be using CCXP to, you know, at, at the very least show the world a teaser for what is to come in the middle of 2025. Some people think it might just get a full-on trailer, but Superman's coming out in the middle of next year, in the middle of 2025. I don't, I think it's probably too early for a proper trailer, but I could easily see them dropping a minute maybe like 70 to 80 second teaser or something like that. It really depends what the marketing strategy is for the film. I wouldn't know, but it's clearly going to be Warner Brothers biggest movie, at least in regards to how much money they spent on it for next year and probably the potential for box office return as well for next year. So advertising, they're going to be focusing in, in on it a lot. Um, so maybe they might just want to show it, especially if they're happy with it. Like if you're happy with it, show it, especially if it's going to get people excited. But until then, we still have some more news to come out, whether it's about Superman or most likely other projects coming our way. Some that have started filming, some that haven't. And in this video, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be talking about some new pieces of, well, news for some upcoming projects for this DC reboot. But of course, throughout the video, be sure to let me know in the comments section down below your various thoughts and everything we go over. Always curious to read what you guys are thinking, whether it's good or bad, just leave your thoughts down there. And of course, if you're going to enjoy the video, I want to show you support, drop a like, takes two seconds. So the first thing to go over is definitely the biggest news of the past week when it comes to this uh, DC reboot or this new DC Studios universe through the creative lens of James Gunn. Uh, well, the first thing is that they officially confirmed that Kyle Chandler is playing Hal Jordan, though. I don't think we need the official thing, but like James Gunn officially confirmed that the DC account officially posted it. So I guess it's officially confirmed. But the thing that sort of drove that official confirmation of Kyle Chandler was the fact that Aaron Pierce was cast as Jon Stewart. Now, of course, the two names that were put into, there was probably more, we'd assume there was more, but the two names that became public about a week and a half ago, about a week ago or something like that, uh, in regards to being attached to Jon Stewart and their, you know, auditioning and stuff was Aaron Pierre, but also uh, Stefan James, I think you, that's how you pronounce his name. Um, and that were the two lead contenders from what we could gather and from what we, people were saying. I thought Stefan James was probably the better choice just in regards to the look of Jon Stewart. Then they're both good actors, obviously. Um, but I was like, look, whoever they choose, they're, they're probably going to get a, a decent, you know, a decent performance and stuff like that. Now they've confirmed Aaron Pierre. It's caused a bit of conversation and there's some conversations that lack a lot of nuance and there's people that are trying to have some nuanced conversations about it. Uh, and this is just mainly due to like some stuff with like, you know, how John Stewart was originally designed and created and portrayed in the comic books. And Aaron Pierre doesn't necessarily 100% identical, like represent that to at least, you know, certain parts of the reading population. So look, I feel bad. Uh, like the thing is, I don't think anyone's attacking Aaron Pierre. He just got, he's an actor looking for work. You can't attack him. It's maybe like the more, the behind the scenes thing where they, where people feel they haven't gotten the authentic John Stewart that they probably wanted. And I think that's probably a line that well, I think that's a thing that's probably it's it's not like a 100% accurate John Stewart that they've got with Aaron Pierre. But at the end of the day, they were probably looking for whoever they thought was the best actor and who they think they can give the best performance. And I think 
I think this is the most important thing. They, even if they sort of know they maybe were veering a bit away from some like 100% pure representation, they might think that Aaron Pierre is the actor that came for it or that like was in the mix that they see has the biggest potential to be a star in Hollywood and they want to get on that bandwagon. Happens all the time with castings, whether it's in TV or in film or even with musicians and stuff like that. If they feel like they are the ones that have the biggest potential to make it somewhere, people will jump on the bandwagon if they, even if they don't fit it. Whether it's a TV, you know, or a TV show or a movie with a certain character, how they're portrayed, or even with like a musician or something in regards to the type of music they do or whatever it is, or whether they even fit a song. It happens. So that's just... I think this is a case of it. Um, but look, by the time the show comes out, maybe people won't care anymore, especially if Aaron Pierre does a good job. And I think I think one thing I have seen is that the people that aren't the biggest fans of like the, like in regards to like the level of representation or like accuracy, might I say that the character uh, or the casting uh, is with Aaron Pierre as Jon Stewart. I think people are just happy at the end of the day that Jon Stewart's going to be in live action and by the looks of it going to be the main Green Lantern, at least in regards to probably being mixed with the Justice League characters and stuff like that. So silver linings, you got to take them when you can. Uh, nothing's perfect. But along with Lantons, they did set um, some of the uh, a director for the first few episodes, that being James Hawes, who's involved with the Apple TV show of Slow Horses, which Slow Horses, might I say, uh, which is the one with Gary Oldman. You probably haven't watched it, but you might have seen like it, it's constantly advertised, um, especially if you have an Apple TV. I swear that pops up on my Apple TV all the time. Like, hey, watch this. I'm like, no, I won't. I've got something else to watch. But anyway, I haven't seen any of that show, um, but it's gone like four or five seasons, so it must be half decent. So yeah. Now, of course, we know Lands is meant to be starting to film at the beginning of next year. So they, they're saying like pretty much January. They're obviously going to fill out the cast more. I did see something about like there was a, 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 a listing for like people had gone in for the, the role of like Hal Jordan's love interest. I know if that's meant to be Carol Ferris. I'm not too sure. I highly doubt it, but it could be. But I, I, I don't know. We'll wait and see there in regards to that. But uh, I would assume that we start to, like, a lot of the stuff in regards to this Lantern show, in regards to castings, if there's more major ones to come, we'll probably get them by the end of this month, I think, just because they'd probably want to start getting into proper pre-production um, with this series because they're going to be filming for half a year. So they'd probably want to get the ball rolling there. Another James Gunn related thing is just a small thing for Peacemaker. And he, James Gunn posted this image on Instagram. I think just all the other social medias as well, teasing a mystery character for Peacemaker season two. A lot of people weren't too sure what it is, but I think the clear thing here is that it is a Native American character. You can see some like, uh, like feathers and stuff like that. A lot of people were wondering if it was blonde hair, but I think it only looks blonde because of the fire. I'm pretty sure this character has gray or even like silver hair if they want to push it to silver. So I think it just looks blonde because of the, the fire and stuff and just how it's lit and shot and stuff like that. So yeah, in regards to who the character is, I've seen a couple of different things. The, the most, the co two most common characters that people bring up is Apache, uh, Apache Chief and um, Manit uh, Manito Raven, I think is the character's name. Um, so there's a couple of different characters that have been posed there. A couple, there's like there's a, more than that in regards to like Native American characters uh, in the DC Comics world. Um, so yeah, it could be any of them. Um, and obviously like you could base it off the looks and stuff like that, but then it gets a live action interpretation, who knows? But I can't remember who it is. There's a, there's a character I should have written it down, but there's a character that's going to be appearing in Creature Commandos that was on like Geo Robot's team. That's a Native American character. And people think that this might be an older version of that character, considering the gray hair. And we don't necessarily know when Creature Commandos, like when Geo Robot was a part of a certain team, whether it was in Vietnam or World War II. Um, but it could be that character maybe aged up, but that's a wait and see. Now, James Gunn also did confirm that there's momentum on Paradise Lost, which is the uh, what do you call it? Like the Wonder Woman prequel, but then also in the Wonder Woman world, like moving Wonder Woman as a character in the DCU forward. I don't know. Paradise, Paradise Lost is the, the, the DCU project that I've, I'm not too sure if how it would, how popular it's going to be. I think it'd be interesting to see if there is a younger Diana on that show. I think if there isn't, I, I don't know, but you don't know how interested people are going to be in things and stuff like that. I think it just depends whether it looks good. Like that's probably at the end of the at the end of the day what matters. Um, but it, to be honest, like Paradise Lost is one of those shows where, or one of the projects where they might go, uh, maybe we just might introduce Wonder Woman. Maybe that's just an easier thing and do something with Wonder Woman rather than doing Paradise Lost, especially because of what Themyscira is and everything like that. But that's a wait and see. Like 
I'm not too sure how this, that show is going to go, um, or even what the overall appeal for it is, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe Creature Commandos might decide that because I don't think there's much appeal with Creature Commandos outside of the fact it's the first DCU project. But then again, that might rate blockbusters. You know, that might go gang gangbusters, if you want to say, um, in regards to people watching it. And then all of a sudden, James Gunn's like, hey, people want to see any of this stuff. So Paradise Lost can work as well. And the final thing in regards to the James Gunn stuff was that he did confirm that half of Peacemaker season two has been filmed so far, which is crazy because I thought they'd be further into it. But then again, it's been sort of mixed up with like the Superman filming and um, stuff like that. And I think even John Cena was doing, was it John? I think John Cena was filming another project as well whilst doing Peacemaker. But I think he wasn't a big character in the other thing he was doing. He wasn't the star like he, was, he is with Peacemaker. So maybe that's why. But I thought that they would have filmed more of it to be completely honest so i was surprised to see that they're only about halfway through so yeah that was sort of surprising and the final thing to talk about is like i was gonna bring it up in a video last week talking about some other dc stuff i just was like whatever um <laughs> the joker sequel folio de is like flopping hard it's got like a deke cinema score from the audience which is the lowest apparent comic book movie rating ever like ever not just this year or in the 2020s or the past 10 years ever in the existence of well, comic book movies coming out. I haven't seen it yet. It's not because like, oh, I just forgot. I, I just, I got the ending spoiled for me. And I'm like, well, oh, God. And then like everyone was saying it was shit. So like, I don't know. Like, I know I'm a big advocate of making your own mind up. I think I'm just going to watch it when it comes out on home video, just because I just, I hate sitting in an empty theater. And I like, I hate, I don't like being in a full theater, but I like the theater to be like, at least a third feel. I feel it like a bit of a creep being in a cinema by myself. It just feels a bit like it feels like I'm going to get murdered by like Ghostface or something if I do that. So, yeah, um, I'm probably going to wait when it comes out in home video. But it was, I'm not surprised it didn't work because it, this movie was one that was like, does it need a sequel? But then it had some interesting elements. I'm like, oh, that could be like a decent watch, I guess. So I'll wait to see how it plays out. Obviously hasn't worked, but some people do like it. Some people say, hey, I don't understand why people are hating it. And maybe I'll fall in that line when I eventually see it. Um, but considering it's flopping hard, I think it might be out in home video. Well, sooner rather than later. I think we experienced that a lot last year with those DC movies because I felt like they came out on home theatre, a home video like two weeks after they premiered because all of them didn't do very well. But yeah, this would be a bad one for Warner Brothers because I think they were expecting this movie to do pretty well. So, uh-oh. Yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like on it, show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on everything we went over in this video. Did you see Joker 2? Did you think it was ass? I don't know. Let me know. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts down there in the comments. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.